Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to report briefly on the experiments performed by the ASIPP and the CREATE teams at East Tokamak during the last 2019 experimental campaign on a model-based multi-input, multi-output isoflux plasma shape controller. For those of you who may not be familiar with the topic, tokamaks are experimental devices which hopefully should prove in the near future the visibility of energy production by means of nuclear fusion. In their essence, tokamaks consist in a toroidal vacuum chamber where a hot ionized hydrogen plasma is confined by means of a powerful magnetic field. In a tokamak, this magnetic field is a superposition of the field produced by a current induced in the plasma itself, plus the field generated by a set of external coils. Moreover, the field generated by these external circuits is usually split into a toroidal component, which is usually kept constant and is produced by a toroidal solenoid wrapped around the chamber, and an orthogonal poloidal component, produced by a set of axially symmetric coils that we want to control. Indeed, reliable and robust operation of modern tokamaks calls for active control of the poloidal component of the magnetic field. This is called magnetic control and involves a number of tasks to be accomplished, in particular, we have to stabilize elongated plasma configurations with respect to vertical motion. We need to regulate the plasma current to a desired value regardless of variations in the plasma resistivity, which is linked to the temperature or of the effect of external current sources. And we may have either plasma position control, which is a simple control logic used for limiter configurations, often in the early phases of a discharge, or plasma shape control, which is what we will focus on here. In order to control plasma shape, we must first define what plasma shape is. It can be shown that in tokamaks, magnetic field lines wrap around the torus, generating a set of nested magnetic surfaces, where each surface is basically a flux tube. In particular, the plasma boundary is defined as the last closed flux surface, which may be either the innermost closed magnetic surface touching the wall for a limiter plasma, or if we refer to a poloidal section of the device, the innermost closed line passing through a zero field point, and in this case the plasma is said to be diverted. In the exception of a perfectly axisymmetric device, the topology of these surfaces can be found by solving an elliptic PDE known as the grad Schofranov equation. This equation solves the ideal MHD equilibrium problem, linking the current density distribution to the so-called magnetic poloidal flux. The magnetic field is basically proportional to the gradient of this quantity. On the right, in this slide, we can see a sample magnetic topology taken from one of the EAST experiments that we will discuss in a while, with the plasma boundary highlighted in red. The green markers represent the reference points for the shape control, and in this work we adopted an isoflux control logic, which means that the controller tries to regulate to zero the difference between the poloidal flux at the green squares and the poloidal flux at the green star which is the desired exponent location. The controller also tries to bring the field at the green star location to zero in order to nail down the X point poloidal position. In this slide, you can see two animations representing two real world tokamak discharges that are picked from the internet just to, to show some examples of these concepts. In particular, on the left, you can see um, limiter plasma taken from Tor Supra while on the right you can clearly identify the plasma boundary for a double null diverted configuration. The results that will be presented here were obtained, as I said, at the end of 2019 at the East Tokamak, which is site in Hefei in the Anhui province of China. Here in the southeast, you can see it on the map. East entered operation about 15 years ago in 2006 as the first tokamak with fully superconducting toroidal and poloidal field coils. As Creata, we've had the pleasure of collaborating with the EAST team since 2015 on the topics of plasma scenario optimization and magnetic control, and more recently on plasma equilibrium reconstruction. In this slide, you can see a picture of the device on the left with a cutaway of its poloidal cross section and a sample upper single null plasma configuration. In particular, you can see that EAST has a major radius of about 1.6 1.7 meters. You can also see the TF coil in purple and the PF coils. And we have six independent modules that make up the CS and eight external coils that form six independent circuits with the pairs PF7, PF9, and PF8, PF10 connected in series. We also have two in-vessel coils uh, that you can see in red inside the chamber and that are used for vertical stabilization, and you can also see available magnetic probes and the post location. For the purpose of shape control, we couple the plasma MHD equilibrium seen before with the circuit equation that take into account the mutual induction between the plasma, the passive structures, and the active coil. 
The plasma is assumed to evolve quasi statically through a series of equilibrium states, leaving the electrical dynamics as the dominant one. Uh, once the reference equilibrium has been found, for example, at a given time instant of a discharge, a linearized model can be computed around this configuration to synthesize the controllers. In our group, this procedure is usually carried out by means of two in house codes called Create L and ML, and you see a reference here. And in particular, the linearized models come in the form that you can see on the slide, where the X vector contains all of the currents, the active currents, passive currents, and the plasma current itself. The U vector is the input vector containing the applied voltages uh, to the coils. The W vector is a disturbance vector that contains a synthetic parameterization of the current density profile of the plasma. In particular, it contains the beta P parameter and then internal inductance parameter. And Y is an output vector that contains a set of quantities of interest, which in our case will be the descriptors of the plasma sheet. If we assume that the dominant dynamics is that of the electrical part of the model, the plasma geometry descriptors are linked to the currents in the coils in an algebraic relation. Actually, we should consider all of the currents here, but we will only take into account the controllable ones and we will consider the others as negligible, which is a good approximation for flat top discharge phases, or we will consider their effect as a disturbance to be rejected by the controller itself. The symmetrix can be then pseudo-inverted to find the optimal combination of currents that regulates the outputs to the desired values. The pseudo-inversion can be SVD-based to remove the modes associated to very small singular values so that we avoid saturations in the actuators, and a weighting matrix that is indicated by Q here can be added to put more emphasis on some of the descriptors, since, for example, on the radial gaps where the flux gradient is higher, a small flux error may result into a large error on the actual plasma chain. If the number of shape descriptors is smaller than the number of available active currents, we can, in principle, regulate all the combination on the right-hand side to zero exactly. However, the number of these descriptors might be larger than the number of available actuators, and this is actually the most frequent case. When this happens, it can be shown that controlling to zero the error on the linear combinations appearing in the matrix product at the right-hand side of the previous equation is equivalent to minimizing the steady-state performance index shown here, which is quadratic in the, in the shape error. Moreover, we can add a dynamical compensator on each channel in order to improve the dynamical performance of the overall system. I won't go into too much detail here due to the short time available, but it is worth mentioning that with our approach, we choose all of the controllers on the shape control channels equal. To test the proposed control solution before the experiments, we developed a set of simulation tools dedicated to the East Tokamak, and you have a reference here to the full paper. These tools allows a, allow us to reproduce experimental discharges in simulation, and in these figures you can see the blue in blue the experimental traces of the controlled shape variables for pulse 92686, and in red the simulated ones. As you can appreciate, they show a very good agreement, so after reproducing this experiment, we exploited these tools to optimize offline the gains of a PI controller. In particular, um, this tuning had the aim of improving the control in the case of a relevant variation of the poloidal beta, which is typical uh, when a significant amount of additional heating is injected. Here the dot dashed green trace and the light blue one show two PI controllers with KP equal to 0.5 and KI equal to 1.25 and 2.50 respectively. We can now move to discuss the actual experiments. All of the pulses we'll see are upper single null plasma discharges. The first pulse is the one we have just seen, which is shot number 92686. In this case, we had 700 kilowatts of injected power and a purely proportional controller on each channel with KP equal to 0.5. You will see that in this case, the controlled variables had a quite large steady state error. And as we've seen from the simulation before, we expect to gain some improvement introducing an integral action. This is indeed what can be seen in pulse 92719 where the error approaches much smaller values at regime for almost all of the controlled variables. In order to test the new controller, in this second case, a smaller amount of power of about 400 kilowatts was injected into the plasma, resulting in a lower value of beta P and a slightly higher average plasma voltage, V loop, which you can see here. The noisier behavior of the plasma in this case was probably due to impurities in the vacuum chamber. It is also worth to mention that in all of these experiments, the controlled variables for the X point were the radial and vertical magnetic field components BR and BT. 
these quantities were controlled to zero at the target X point location, while the actual position of the X point was reconstructed and it's shown here to have a more intuitive idea of what's going on. Then we have two more pulses that are pulse 92720 and pulse 92723. In these experiments, we try to raise the amount of auxiliary power, switching out both of the available lower hybrid antennas. In both cases, a second LH antenna was switched on at t equal to 4 seconds to inject up to 1 megawatt of heating power. And this resulted in a steep increase of beta p that acted as a disturbance in the plasma shape control. To be more precise, the disturbance that enters the system, as, as we've seen before, is related to the time derivative of beta p, and thus we can observe a significant bump on the controlled quantities, which is quite well recovered by the controller in about one second. Moreover, the level of lower hybrid power injected in the plasma during the second of these pulses was enough to achieve the desired fully non-inductive regime, and indeed we can observe a negative value of the loop voltage, which means that all of the current is driven by means of external current sources, which is something that we actually want to, to achieve long pulse operation of the machine. And here we can see the same plots we had before for the previous experiments. First of all, you can see the bump at 4 seconds, uh, which is due to the increase in beta p that goes from 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 in the first case and 0 0.9 in the second case. And this bump is nicely recovered by the controller. You can also see that all of the variables are approaching the, the reference value correctly. And in the lower right part of the, of the panel, you can see the two lower hybrid antennas. Uh, which are set to a total of 1 megawatt in the first case and 1.5 megawatt in the second case. And you can also see the loop voltage, which is uh, negative in the second case, and that means, as we say, that we have a fully non-inductive regime. You can also see here the reconstructed shape for the first and the last of the presented pulses. You can see that in the first case, we still have some residual error in the lower region of the plasma. While in the second case, the boundary is passing through all of the control points, basically. Some future developments of this work include the test of these controllers with different per plasma configurations, and in particular with advanced or alternative plasma configurations, with the aim of reducing the heat load on the diverter plates, or at least spreading it more evenly. Uh, moreover, we'd like to extend this approach to gap control, which provides a more easily understandable quantity for the, for the final user. And with this, I have concluded my presentation, so I will thank you for your attention and leave some room for questions and discussion.